Hey folks, welcome to my new channel. In the last video on microservice architecture introduction, I showed you a very high level overview of what the different components are in such an architecture and like what are the general purposes, right? So you may observe that there, may, there is a component called an API gateway, which is right at the front. Right, so in this video and in the next one, there'll be a series of two, we'll be talking in detail about this API gateway. So in this first video, we'll be talking about what are API gateways to begin with. The same question we will we'll be covering is why do you need to run an architecture? So what are the problems that you're looking at, which they're going to solve? Right? And the third part is what are the design patterns used in API gateways. This is also very important because you need to understand like how logically what are the things you're looking at, what are the guidelines you're going to follow when you're starting build, starting build your own API gateways. Right? So these are the three points which you're going to cover in this video. Let's just start with the first one. What are API gateways? So this section will build upon what we learned in the previous video. Right? So you can see here this is the same architecture diagram from the video I had last time. And you can see it acts as a single point of access to all of your services. So here the API gateway sits and client A and client B all access the same uh, particular endpoint. And now they are going to, now the API gateway is going to route all these requests to different services here. Right? So this acts as a single point of access just to start off. It also acts as a, a kind of a something which helps you to transfer between protocols and you know add some functionalities on top of it. Like maybe you can add an authentication, uh, you know, uh, middleware kind of thing in between this or you can also add protocol translation load balancing and all this stuff so basically an API gateway is what enables you to do all of that so this is a very very brief introduction about you know what an API gateway is so let's just let's just look at what are the different problems that API gateway is going to solve and this will give you a much better clarity in understanding the need for an API gateway now let's just imagine if you had a monolith application right if you had a monolith application so Let's just say this is your application architecture, right? So you have multiple services inside of it. Okay. There you go. Right. So what happens here is see you are a client here. Now you want to get something done. Like say, let's just say you want to get your order history. Right. So an order history will have data from multiple services. It will interact with different services within your application. So what I do is I send, I send a request to this monolith. Say so whatever at endpoint, whatever endpoint it is exposed at. So this is say this is port 8080 of uh, this particular monolith. So I'm sending a request here. Now this will be used, will be utilized, will be try to this application will try to serve this request by talking to multiple services within its own. So you don't have to know what different components there are inside this application, right? So we don't understand. We don't need to know what other applications. I, I don't even know there's an A service or B service inside this monolith which is serving my request together, right? So we don't have any, any face, we don't need to face any problem in case of a monolith, right? So let's just assume that instead of a monolith, we now have a microservice architecture, which is the case, right? We are using a microservice architecture now. So let's just say we have, say, multiple services again. Yeah, so there's service A, there's service B, there's service C. All right, so again, you have a client here. Now, as we know, in microservices, all of these are deployed independently. So you might assume, it's, it's not wrong to assume that they have their own IP, say they have their own public facing, you know, addresses. So what the client needs to now do is he needs to understand, okay, he needs to, if, if he needs information from three services, then he needs to keep track of what the addresses for three services are, right? So for example, if I want to find out, say again, the order history, then I'll need to know, say it interacts with all of these three services. It gets data from all the three services. So what this client has to do, it has to manage all these addresses. So I'll have to make a call to this, I'll have to make a call to this and to this as well. Right, so this is this is something which will this is something which is very different from a monolith architecture. So you can you can off the bat you can identify some very common problems that this kind of arrangement will give you. Right. So again the first of all the client implementation is going to get really messy. Right. So if you're implementing a client code, you can imagine the kind of complexity you're going to face with the increasing number of services. So this is three services right now. If you expand to hundreds of services. So in that case, the complexity will rise exponentially. Right? That is one of the things. Apart from that, we can also observe that, you know, the client also needs to have all the information regarding how the service is structured. And now say, for example, if you want to restructure, if you want to refactor your services at the backend, you have to communicate the, all the changes to the client back. And so this is this is something which is not really maintainable at a very large scale. So all of this gives you some idea that okay, we need to we need to solve this problem. This is one of the very important problems here. Yeah. So the third and important problem here is latency. So if you look at um, these two diagrams here, so let's just say 
this is my client application this is my client and this is my server this is, this is my server now say if this client wants some information from the service so for example i am doing the order order request again i want to get details of my order and now this requires me to get information from all these three services right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make one call to the service one one call to service two one call to service three and get all these data and then aggregate them so this is how i'm going to do it right now this involves three network calls right three network calls and so it, uh, it again requires some time to complete all this request on the other hand if you imagine if i have uh, some sort of a gateway here what i'm essentially doing is making just one network call to the server so gateway is part of the server so it's inside this server it is not part of the client so that is how it is so you can imagine this box here so this will sit as a part of server i'll make call to this gateway now this gateway knows that for what request what service it needs to contact to so it will understand okay for, i think this request will need to be serviced using three different services. and so this will make, and so this will make the call to these three services right and now essentially we're using just one network call between server and the client but these calls are happening within the same server within the same architecture and so these are faster than a calling between the application and the service directly right so this this really speeds up your response times which is also very nice and this is also one of the things apart from that we have other really important parts for example let's just say uh, imagine again that you have these microservices now all of these services will have some requirements which are common to them right so as i said say these have public facing ips right they all have public facing ips now off the bat you can understand if you have public facing ips it's really security threat so you need to have authentication maybe built into all of these things right so you're going to implement a similar block for all of the microservices it adds some kind of redundancy here right this is one of the things and apart from that you need to also enforce all kind of you know policies on all of these microservices independently again now let's just also think of uh, if you remember from the last video let, let me just go over uh, to one of the architecture i had in the last video here you can see these three different services can use different protocols for example review service is in amqp protocol right and the recommendation service is in rest api they can do this because there is an api gateway which sits in front and which translates these protocols to web friendly protocols right but if you have just these services being exposed directly to a client right in that case you need to use maybe rest or some other web friendly protocol so it really limits your choices in terms of what protocols you can use for your macro services right so these are two other motivations two other motivations uh, in order to have some sort of an api gateway one is the protocol translation and other is using some kind of uh, common area to implement shared responsibilities that is one of the reasons here all right now we looked at a lot of uh, problems and motivation behind using an api gateway now we can group all of these points together in different design patterns which will help you understand this better if you have a common set of design patterns and you'll know okay this is the principles you need to follow to build my api gateway so let's just look at what design patterns we are going to use here so again let's just go over all the design patterns for once so routing we already looked at this so it provides a single endpoint for all different clients and it decouples the client from services that is already we discussed something right the next is aggregation aggregation which means that the, the same as the diagram which you saw earlier this is the, this is what is meant by aggregation so you're not communicating with services independently you are taking all the responses aggregating them once and sending to the application that is that what aggregation is now one thing to keep in mind is aggregation is not supported by a lot of api gateways as well so as, as i said we have multiple options for choosing an api gateway for your uh, system so not all of them will support api aggregation right so so what in that case you can do is this so you remember this diagram from again the last video so you see i have a cost out of a controller here right so this controller is kind of an aggregator microservice so you can imagine that my event service and messaging service are two two most important services so these are my service and service b right now i add an additional service which is a controller service the only job of this controller service is to aggregate my results from the other services so what happens here is like this acts as a sort of addition to a gateway so you can imagine that in addition to having an api gateway so this is the api gateway right i have another microservice here which is the aggregator microservice 
it sort of adds to the functionality of this API gateway because this API gateway does not support it natively, right? So what this microservice will do is similar to the diagram I showed you in the last slide. So it will say, I make some request to this uh, API gateway. It gets forwarded to this uh, aggregator microservice. Now this microservice will make calls to the different services, say service one, service two, service three, aggregate all the results here and then send it back through the API gateway to the application. Right? And now this is the code which you implement on your own. So you can see here the controller service which I have in this scenario, it does the same thing. So for example, if I wanted it to you know, fetch results from event temp messaging, I could do that very easily in code, right? So that is, that is how you, you know, go around uh, the lack of API aggregation in multiple API gateways. Right? So this is one of the very important things. So this is called a, it, it can be called anything, but I prefer to call it as a, you know, aggregator microservice because its job is to only aggregate, you know, it does not have any of its own databases. It does not have its own functionality. It's the only job it has is to get data from different services and then you know, aggregate them and send it to back to the application. So this is, this is how uh, you get around that. So like, aggregation was another design pattern and now we have an offloading design pattern. So as I mentioned the first time that uh, API gateway, you can add multiple functionalities on top of it, right? Because since we mentioned that, uh, say, if you have multiple microservices, there are a lot of jobs which are redundant, right? You need security for all, all of the microservices, right? So this, this is not really specific to any, any microservice in this case. So let's just say I have uh, this service. Again, it's similar to the diagram we drew earlier. Drew earlier. So, so, so all of these need to have authentication, right? So can we offload this functionality from this microservice code to some external entity, right? So for example, if I had an API gateway, let's say this is an API gateway now, I will make sure that all requests go through the API gateway and then the API gateway is responsible for authenticating your requests, right? So you don't need to have authentication built in into this, you know, microservices here. This is the idea, right? So this is one, just one of the examples of authentication. You can also have other, other examples like allow block lists. So maybe you want to prevent certain IPs which are any, which are maybe um, doing attacks on your system. So all of that can be handled directly through the API gateway. We'll look at all of these things. So like you can pre-process all your requests to identify what IPs they're using and then, you know, block it right there. You can also do rate limiting again, the same thing. And then also you can add logging and monitoring. So whatever requests are coming in can be logged and monitored. Like how many requests have we made to service A? How does the traffic rate to service B? Right. So the, all of these things can be handled directly using an API gateway because that is a single point of access. It knows whatever, you know, requests are being made to entire application. Right, so this is, these are some of the, you know, tasks which you can offload to a service like the API gateway. So this is also one of the patterns which you can use. All right. Awesome. So I hope that through this video, you had a better idea of what API gateways are, why they are required and what are the design patterns that you need. So we looked at a lot of principles there. We looked at offloading, we looked at API, API aggregation, we looked at routing. And so it's, it's only logical to assume that we need some practical implementation so that we can look at how these things are actually working, right? So how are you defining the routes? It, how do you accomplish API aggregation and stuff like that? So in the next video in this series, we'll be talking, we're looking at different options that you have to you know, build your own API gateways and then also look at how you can get started with your own. So that is all for this video. I'll be looking, I'll be continuing with this in the next video. See you there. Thank you so much for watching.